Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And yes, it's time once again for the main event of the AM. And leading the way, your host, moderator, and guide to the markets, Walker England here, speaking on behalf of DailyFX.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on this Wednesday, an FOMC Wednesday, to say the least, for another exciting edition of Day Trading Markets. Yes, over the course of the next hour, we're going to review prevalent themes affecting the market, including our event this afternoon. But ultimately, I want you to come away with a plan of action for day trading. So as you can imagine, that incorporates quite a bit of information. So let's go ahead and get right down to business, shall we, with today's presentation. Now, first things first, a few short points of order. Of course, I do want you to pay close attention to the GoToWebinar software. This is where you can communicate with yours truly on this end of the microphone. So please, chart request welcome questions also welcome I'll work as many of these as absolutely possible in our time remaining secondarily this is how I can get you out some great resources including our free currency forecast so if you haven't taken advantage of those I see there's still about 20 percent of you out there who have not downloaded our forecast I take advantage at the following link so all sorts of good stuff there please 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 I uh, use these resources to your advantage now next up just one or two short points of order in terms of our disclaimers because yes ladies and gentlemen markets carry risk and because we have the ability to lose money we should only be trading with risk capital also known as monies that we can afford to lose equally as important I do have my hypothetical trading disclaimer last slide of the day I promise but uh, ladies and gentlemen a very important one because of course uh, past performances of any strategies talked about inside of today's program certainly not indicative of future results and secondarily yours truly on this end of the mic hey I can't guarantee you profits inside of your life trading account. So take your time, give these a read as we begin today's lesson. And I want to begin our webinar with another quick poll. And basically, I'm looking to feel out the audience for today to see if you are bullish or bearish the U.S. dollar. Now, of course, everybody's got an opinion in regards to markets, and of course, for those of you in the neither camp, remember, neither is also an opinion. Now, why does this matter? Well, having a bias is a good thing, because as we've spoke about in our Tuesday and Thursday webinars, it gives us a general direction of how I want to trade. Ergo, if I'm bullish on the buck, I may be looking to sell something like the euro dollar maybe I want to buy something like the dollar yen alternatively if I'm bearish the dollar maybe I'm looking at some of my commodity currencies like the dollar CAD hitting monthly lows might I add on Canadian uh, crude inventories excuse me I'm earlier this morning now those of you in the neither camp you may be looking for more data and rightfully so because we do have a rather large event looming over the market. So what I'm going to do is close out my question here and I want to pull up our economic calendar. And what we're going to see is a series of high importance events. Yes, the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee rate decision is going to be this afternoon and that's just going to be in a short two hours and 52 minutes. Now, we have a lot of high importance events throughout the year, but why is so much emphasis being placed on this one? Well, the Federal Reserve said interest rates have been coming on the way for 2016, and so far, they have balked at every instance. We have not had a single rate hike yet for the 2016 trading year. So, the Fed is frankly running out of time. In this meeting, it is expected to see a quarter percentage hike this afternoon. Now, typically, that's going to be dollar bullish. Again, money follows yield, higher rates on a broad-based, basic, fundamental level, we would reasonably expect 
that that would maintain a dollar bullish bias. Well, there could be some exceptions to that. And my friend and colleague, Mr. Ilya Spivak, wrote about the dangers of a hike, but with the lack of foreign guidance, an opportunity for the dollar to fall. Basically, what that comes down to is the expectations of rate hikes in the future. Now, I'm going to get to today's price here momentarily. Don't sweat it. We are going to talk about that. But I want to zoom back to 2015, where we had a similar scenario. Again, the last time that the Fed raised rates was in December of 2015 here. And we can see the market continuing to push up towards those new highs and excuse me here we go here's going to be uh, our 2015 results now at that point in time again we were expecting to see a series of hikes throughout 2016 so we did have an initial surge on the buck but hey those hikes never came so we saw a little push and pull in the market and we've effectively been trading in a broad-based range until now, where we may see potential hikes coming in the future for 2017, or it could be a one and done. And what would that mean for the dollar? Again, that expectation where we start to see prices move back in this range bound pattern towards the lows. So again, bull, bear, and neither. Frankly, there's a lot of fundamental reasoning for any of these three choices. Now, you may be asking and you may be wondering, what are the odds of future rate hikes for 2017? Well, let me be the first to tell you. Frankly, I don't know. And I'll be brutally honest with you. Going back to our last rate hike last year in December, it was expected that we were going to see four hikes for the 2016 trading year. As of yet, we have seen zero. So even when we start to get forward guidance again, the proof is in the actual rate hike. So we'll believe it when we see it. Now, what does that mean for us as traders? Well, for me as a technician, it means follow the charts. What do my eyes tell me in regards to price action? And what do we have going on in to our FOMC event? And of course, I want to keep my chart here fairly clean and fairly straightforward. And I have our classic 200 period moving average on our dollar chart. Where are we? Well, we're above the 200 period moving average. We've seen that going forward for the month of October, the dollar has had a killer run. And again, we've reached those multi-year highs. Granted, they're slightly higher highs, still a higher high, but We've now seen a pullback off of that peak. We haven't made a higher high of any sort, not even a slightly higher high, going back to November 24th. So, in the short run, taking a look at, let me go ahead and change this. My charts like to move my moving average by one period. Hasn't really affected that, but a 10 period EMA here the dollar index now below that value. So in the short term, it could be argued that we are seeing momentum wane for the dollar index. Now, don't get me wrong. This daily bar could change very rapidly. Again, if we get forward guidance for hikes through 2017, Fed comes out and says that the U.S. economy is heating up, well, we could have a very large blue bar on our hands by the end of the day. In the same reasoning, if we don't see that forward guidance, if we see just a one and done in terms of rate hikes, we can see a very broad red bar in the short run. So these are the key values that we need to remember going into today's event. The EMA is at 188.94. Our previous high in the daily chart is going to be right at uh, 102. Let me get you the exact value here. That is going to be at 102.05, and our previous low is going to be at 99.43. So quite a bit going on with the dollar index. Now, taking a look at a comment from Edgar saying, couldn't that just be traders closing positions before the news? Absolutely. Now, let's take a look at the logic behind Edgar's question. 
Going into this news event, we have had a nice dollar run, but traders locking in profit could go ahead and make small minor adjustments to the dollar index. Again, if you're buying, you've got to close out with a sell order. So yeah, it could be dragging down price this morning, but ultimately, traders buying and selling aren't going to have the same influence as the Fed, because who's going to be the biggest trader of the dollar? At the end of the day, the Fed is going to make that impact when they basically come out and tell us how capital is flowing based off of those interest rates. So yes, it does have a small effect, not discounting it. Again, at the end of the day, the proof is what we know. In the short run, at least for now, we see price underneath that moving average. And certainly I retain the right to flip my opinion if prices move back above that average. That's what technical analysis is all about. Having a definitive point, making a bias, and then sticking with it, or when we get new information, otherwise flipping that opinion and moving elsewhere. So let's talk about our favorite dollar currency pairs going into the FOMC rate decision. I think the majority of you are looking at the dollar yen. Now, rightfully so. Again, uh, going back of a dollar yen, I'll go ahead and delete my pivots here momentarily. But just for the month of November, moving off of that election low right above 101, we've seen price move up to, wow, a high just over 116. So that's 1,500 pips here from low to high. This is one of the arguably strongest dollar trends out there with the dollar yen absolutely making positive ground against the yen. Now, out of all the pairs, we could see a reaction in either direction quite violently, depending on the outcome of this event. If it's going to be a dollar strong event, well, what's one of the strongest dollar trends out there? Again, the dollar yen. Alternatively, if we see dollar weakness, well, this could be one of the major pairs to react because this pair, again, is banking on continued dollar strength. So let's go ahead and move in and take a look at our key values of support and resistance for the day. And all I'm doing is adding a series of pivot points here. If you're joining me for the first time, they are Camarilla pivots. And if you would like, you can go to the YouTube channel. Uh, archive and catch a full hour presentation on how to trade with Camarilla pivots. But if you got questions, ask and I will indeed work them in as time allows. First, what interests me? Price moving off of support and is remaining supportive going into this afternoon at 114.98. Now, traditionally, this is going to be considered a point of range support. Let me go ahead and type that in, range support. And we can look at this as an opportunity to potentially look for a retracement in a bullish dollar scenario. Why? Well, this would be seen as a pullback in the dollar it is, and a bounce would be considered a retracement back in the direction of the trend. So range support going to be important here at 114.97 near present levels. But to the downside, our last value of support for today, this is going to be the area where we're going to start looking for bearish breakouts. And let me go ahead and I get that chart up. Again, I apologize for the blip on the graph there. Here we go. I'm going to reload my dollar yen chart. And let's go ahead and get our last label up. This is going to be bearish breakouts. And that is going to be under, uh, yes, our low at 114.77. So uh, bearish breakouts. And underneath the low, that's where we'll start looking for prices to decline. Now, in this instance, if we're looking for bearish breakouts underneath the low, Traders may start to extrapolate a one-time extension of today's range under the S4 pivot. And a typical scenario may look something like this in this example. Traders looking for a reversal. Again, this would be where the dollar is weakening 
we would look for a move of uh, twice the distance of the range that would be 40 pips to the downside bringing a projected target to 114.37 now on the flip side if prices bounce remember we're looking at quite the opposite scenario this would be a dollar strong scenario looking at prices move up towards the top of the range and again thanks to the Camarilla pivots being equidistant I can have a one to two risk reward ratio in the opposing direction now let me go back and get my label here this is range support and let's go ahead and get my next label this is going to be range resistance now why am I highlighting these areas? Is the market going to be ranging through the FOMC event? Frankly, we don't know. There is always the opportunity that prices don't break out in either direction. If prices continue to ping between these values, yes, it could be a range-bound scenario. Again, not likely, but it could happen. Always worth noting that prices may continue to ping between these values for the remainder of the session. Now, last but not least, the final scenario. This is going to be a bullish breakout. And bullish breakouts beginning over the top of our R4 point of resistance. This would be, again, in a dollar strong scenario, looking at a continuation of the dollar index to the top side. Again, if this occurs, I'd reasonably expect my daily bar to be back over this 10 period EMA on the DXY, but the dollar yen breaking out over R4, this scenario looks a little bit like this. I would look to potentially uh, trade above R4, that's going to be at 115.58, 40 pip take profit point, that's going to be at 115.98, and all the way down here back inside of my range that's going to be a 20 pip stop for the final uh, scenario of the day so there's a lot going on here there's a lot of different scenarios at play and again what should we do as traders well first we need to stick to the plan trade what we know and remember we can always wait to trade after the event itself now this is a comment that I've gotten earlier in the week. How do we position ourselves ahead of the news? Well, frankly, some traders don't want the risk at all. And if you're one of those traders, that's absolutely okay. Oftentimes, we could see the event come out and we'll start to see volatility pick up, often like the NFP events that we saw earlier in the month. And then after we wait 15 or 20 minutes after the event, we can make our move into the market remember these are just highlighted zones for our trading so if I wait 15 minutes after the event and we're still above this R4 value sure that could be a great way to go ahead and confirm a bias to the top side now did I immediately have to trade did I have to have an open position absolutely not again I wait for the news I pause for a moment and then, and only then, do I go out and look to position myself either long or if we see a move underneath the low, this could be a bias to the downside. So, again, don't feel like you have to immediately put out a position and trade the event itself or even get in ahead of time. It's all completely up to you and how much risk you want to assume and whether you want to trade the volatility following the FOMC event. Okay, uh, yes, this one, going to be a chart request. Thank you for the chart request. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Euro USD. Now, this is what I was actually talking to one of my colleagues about in the break room right before this webinar event, and I actually wrote about it on Daily Effects. One of the things that has interested me for the euro dollar is actually going to be the trading range and out of all of our dollar pairs this one one of the more rangy opportunities that we have available look at what price action has done over the last month of trading yes over the last month the euro dollar really hasn't made 
much ground on anything. It's been virtually trading sideways. We have a swing low. This is going to be on December the 4th. And let me just go back and verify that value here. The low for the euro dollar on the 4th is going to be right at 105.03. And my high is going to be at 108.73. So we see the two extremes of the market, testing the low, and now where are we? We're almost right smack in the middle of the range here. Now, prices can do several things. Again, prices may go ahead and touch resistance. They may go ahead and touch support, or frankly, they could continue to trade in an intermediate range that has developed over the following week. Now, it's of my opinion... The short-term range has come into effect because traders are waiting for the outcome of this Fed um, announcement. Now, again, bulls could break higher, bears could break lower, but in the interim, we're sitting inside of the range. So that forward guidance, of course, is going to play a lot into either a counter-trend reversal here for the euro dollar or a continuation of this downtrend that we've been seeing develop going back to May of this year. Let's go ahead and zoom in on our key short-term pricing levels. Absolutely. Add back in our pivots here on the graph, and let's take a look at short-term values of support and resistance. Okay. Our short-term resistance point right above that previous weekly high and what we see is price testing that value now. And resistance doing its job holding in price action below 106.58. So if the dollar is weak, what do we reasonably expect? We expect to see a breakout of the R4 pivot out of this short-term range prefaced by the high and look for prices to project up the graph. Now in this instance, let's go ahead and use our pivots to gauge a preliminary price projection. Our range in this instance is going to measure. Let's go in and take a look. Looks like our range is going to measure about 36 pips to the top side. That's going to put preliminary profit targets up at um, just about 106.94. Now, in the event that we have a turn in price, the dollar strengthens up. The first thing I'm going to notice is that prices are going to return back inside of the range. That means prices are going to decline inside of the R3 pivot here and potentially move back down to S3. Now, once we get to S3 106.06, we could see that short-term pricing range coming into play by testing a yesterday's low. So these values almost lining up with a significant point of support. Again, at this value, if the dollar begins to strengthen, we should continue to see prices move lower. But if they bounce here, again, this could be one of those instances where the market just hasn't quite solidified its opinion of the news, and we would look for those range-bound opportunities. But to the flip side, breakouts underneath the low, S4, 105.87. Let's look at our projections to the downside here. This will be my S3 pivot. Again, 18 pips back inside of the range, and a initial 36 pip projection is going to put it at 105.50, uh, just shy of that previous low. So that's going to put us back towards those daily values of support and resistance. Okay, this one coming in from Pierre saying, is it a good idea to put entry orders out prior to FOMC? Because spreads can change and there is slippage risk. Now, there's two sides of the coin, Pierre. Again, it's just like trade confirmation. Uh, basically, know that volatility will increase during the news, and what you'll see is several things happen to the market. Well, spreads may widen, and we may see slippage. Basically, it comes back to this. There's risk in volatile conditions, and 
what we'll find is liquidity providers are just like any other trader, right? When they have risk, they take measures to go in and help contain those risks. And those are the things that you have mentioned. Now, sometimes during the news, traders just say, get me in. I'm willing to accept wider spreads or perhaps slippage on my order. Now, whether you're willing to accept that or not, it comes down to you. Now, if you're not wanting that volatility, hey, again, take 15 or 20 minutes, let the news sort itself out, and move on from there. Other traders see these large candles, right? Euro dollar the other day, um, we could see the large shift in price. This was from our high at 108.69 uh, down to the low of 106.59. And frankly, a trader might have said, hey, just get me in anywhere here. This is a nearly 300 pip bar. Even if the spreads wind out a little or if there's a slippage, I'm willing to accept that because of the nature of the move. So I can't answer that question for you. Just know the pros and the cons of each and then make an intelligent decision. And my decision is to stick with my trading plan. If it's to trade the news with entry orders, Trade the news with entry orders. If it's to wait till after the event, wait till after the event. And make sure you do the same each and every time. Okay. Always good commentary there, Pierre. Happy to have you here. Let's continue with our analysis. And wow, time flying by. We are halfway through today's presentation. And I want to move forward and take a look at the dollar CAD. Now, the dollar cat has really been something. This has been one of the few pairs that has been very resilient against a strengthening dollar. Now, a lot of it has to do with correlations to the dollar cad with oil. We saw that um, OPEC, potential production cut, really playing into the uh, Canadian dollar strength. Also, again, this morning we saw crude inventories helping push on the CAD along towards lower lows. So this is a pair, if I'm anti-dollar, if I'm bearish on the dollar, I want to look at a continuation of this trend. And let's get to the short-term levels in a moment. I just want to back this out and look at the daily chart here. Here's our abrupt turn right after Thanksgiving. We see prices going ahead and starting to diverge with the markets and our indicators, as we talked about yesterday. We did see a shift in the trend down towards our lows. Now, one thing I do want to mention, if you're looking at the dollar CAD, I believe I brought this up yesterday, but it warrants a second look for those of you using the moving average technique for the trend. Where are we in terms of our 200 period moving average? Well, we are right on top of it, ladies and gentlemen. And I think today's event, again, is going to tell the tale of the tape for the dollar CAD. Now, arguably, we are in a short-term downtrend. I can even go in and add my EMA back to the graph here. And what we'll see, again, is prices underneath that 10 period EMA indicating a short term downtrend and there we go I'll get all my lines up here but we see price in the long term supported off of the 200 period moving average at 13072 so what's a trader to do again this is one of those scenarios right if the dollar rebounds and continues to strengthen against other currency pairs well this may be the end of the line for the short-term dollar CAD trend to the downside. Because again, long-term support, we're running right into it. Alternatively, if we see price close the day underneath 130.72, now we've got something really to talk about. The short-term trend going to be down on the dollar CAD and arguably we would see the long-term trend also going to be down for the dollar CAD. Again, this would be a scenario where the Fed says one and done. We do see a continued strengthening oil market, perhaps helping out the CAD as well. So fundamentally and technically, all the stars would be aligning for a further bearish dollar CAD event. So two scenarios, bounce or break. 
Which one's going to occur? We'll just have to wait and see. Let's move into our short-term price levels for the dollar CAD. Okay, dollar CAD in the short run, we do see prices bouncing back above support. When we had that crude inventory data, we did have a breakout down towards lower lows. And let's look at that breakout. Breakout in review, a move underneath the S4 pivot here. And we see a one-time extension of the range brings us to uh, just about 130.87. That's going to be a small profit target, only about 22 pips. But price met that. And now we're seeing price move back towards previous support. Now this is a cautionary tale. We've seen price break out and fail. We've seen price break out and potentially fail again. So a lot of volatility in the dollar CAD here. So breakout traders beware. Again, even though we've had one affirmative breakout to the downside, nothing says that the market can't do one of these. Because remember, while this is a breakout pivot, it is still a pivot of support. So if we start moving above the S3 value, I'd reasonably expect it to move up towards R3. And that's going to be at 131.42. We've tested this value once. Again, it's not out of the nature of the pair to perhaps test it twice at that juncture in time. Hey, that could be the end of any bearish bias we have. Because remember, that daily support is down there at the bottom. Bullish breakouts bouncing back above R4, 131.52, the key mark for the dollar bulls out there for the day. Let's take a look at a sample example here. R4 going to be extended by, I believe it was 22 pips, and my risk back inside of the range creating our nice and tidy uh, one to two risk reward ratio here, bringing me to 31 a 72 on the dollar CAD. So a lot going on, some critical points of support for the pair. Will the trend hold? Will we bounce? We will see in short order. Okay, uh, yes, I see a lot of chart requests coming up. I will take those as many as possible. There is one final currency pair that is on my list for today. And I want to make sure that everybody is aware that just because we have the FOMC today, just because this webinar focuses on the dollar and our yen crosses, doesn't mean that we have to trade uh, the dollar or the yen. I've had a lot of requests for range-bound activity, and I want to bring up something that is completely unrelated to today's event, and that is going to be the Euro Pound, and it is one of the ranges that I wanted to highlight for today, frankly, because the dollar is not involved. Again, Euro slash Pound, not a lot of dollar movement here. And rightfully, we have seen prices stay inside of our R3 and S3 pivot. Let's go ahead and ask uh, this quick poll question. I've gotten quite a few emails on range trading, but I want to see a live uh, result here. Let me know if you're range trading markets. If you are typing a Y, if you're not range trading, hey, that's okay. Go ahead and type in and in, but I'm just trying to kind of feel the audience out here to see how much time to dedicate in the future for these range bound type markets. So I see the Y's and the N's coming in. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your participation here. And uh, just doing the quick math in my head, it looks like a quarter to a third of you are still looking at ranges. So how do we identify the range? Well, Prices are trading in between range support and range resistance. So, how do I approach something like the Euro Pound? Well, I'm just looking for prices to continue pinging between resistance and support. And arguably, one of the reasons why range trading is very popular, because the strategy is straightforward, right? What do I want to do? Well, price reaches resistance. I want to look for opportunities to sell. Price reaches support. What do I want to do? Well, I want to go back in and I want to look for opportunities to buy. 
prices reach resistance and the process repeats itself. Now, frankly, this process can go on indefinitely until one of two things happens. Either the market is going to, A, break out. In the event of a breakout, what happens? Well, I don't want to be range trading, right? If I'm buying off of support here and I am looking for the fourth extension of this range, I want to have my risk contained underneath this breakout value. Again, if the market is moving down to a lower low, in the event of a bearish breakout, there we go, I'll get my labels right, I no longer want to be buying. So I can go ahead and set a stop order underneath this value. Now, likewise, if I'm selling, again, I can look to contain my risk to the top side through a potential stop order to my bullish breakout point. So I can continue to trade the range until a breakout or secondarily until the range concludes. Now that range may carry over into tomorrow, but remember tomorrow I'm going to get a new set of pivots. I'm going to get a new range to potentially trade and I will have to adjust my strategy accordingly. So for those of you looking to get away from the dollar and get away from some of the end volatility, check out the Euro Pound, the nice range that's been developing this morning. And from low to high, it looks like we're at 34.10 all the way down to, uh, yes, it's going to be uh, 83.73. So nice range here on the Euro Pound. We'll keep an eye on that through today's events. Chart request. Let's get after them. Just a few minutes remaining. Let's burn through them here. This one going to be a request to look at gold markets. Absolutely. Don't forget we can review CFDs as well. Remember CFDs available for trading in most jurisdictions outside of the United States. And what intrigues me is the gold slash dollar equation. Remember, if the dollar is going to be strong, what do we see? Well, we typically see gold prices decline. If I break this out and move to the daily chart, as that dollar index is moving up, gold has been moving down. Here's our election spike. We have a series of lower lows, and now we're seeing consolidation on gold on the daily chart. In the interim, moving into our shorter term graphs, Gold is going to be poised for a potential rally over resistance. And gold could absolutely be one of the assets to benefit from a weakened dollar. Now, my pivots are taking a while to load, but there they are, over $1,162 and out. So again, we could see gold already attempting to take off ahead of today's events. So, what does a bullish breakout look like? Again, we can see a extension of the range, and my range is going to uh, be just about $5.80 an ounce. Let's dial that in. That takes a projection to right at about $1,168 an ounce. My risk contained back inside of the range, that is going to be found at uh, $1,159.95 an ounce. In the event that we see the dollar firm up, it would be trend on. We would see a continuation of gold weakness, perhaps. Our first value of support, this would be classified as a retracement back in the direction of the primary trend. And uh, that would be a support value of $1,000. dollars $154.37 an ounce, making a retracement scenario on gold look a little something like this. Here we have our R4 pivot and my extension down to the S3 pivot. Bearish breakouts for the day, beginning underneath S4, looking a little something like this. And again, we can see that at 1,151 and my stop back at 1,154. Again, I make that extension down the graph to uh, just about 1,146. Now, for those of you thinking about trading with entry orders, again, there's a lot of different things that go into a trading strategy. In short, 
Those entry orders will remain pending during the news and execute at the prevailing market price. But one reason, again, why I like entry orders is first, it gets you in at the prevailing market price. So if we do start to see a runaway market, it does indeed get us in. Now, secondarily, what happens if we are absolutely dead wrong in regards to our bias? Guys, it happens. Let's be honest with ourselves. At the end of the day here, price is going to do one of two things. It's going to move up or it's going to move down. Let's say this scenario happens. We have a breakout to the top side and bullish traders for gold are excited. And what happens to the bearish trader here on the sidelines? Well, if I'm planning on a bearish breakout and I have an entry order underneath my low, and the market's rising, well, what happens to my entry order? Well, that price is never available. My order doesn't execute. All I do is simply go ahead and delete my order, and I go back to the drawing board. Maybe I look at the DXY, say the short-term downtrend is going ahead and continuing. Maybe as opposed to selling, now I want to look for opportunities to buy. I can easily flip my bias, look for other opportunities and go from there. So that's going to be a quick look at gold. Again, one of many CFDs out there. This one uh, going to be a chart request for the Aussie dollar. Sure. Let's take a look at the Aussie dollar. Still plenty of time left on today's program. It's going to be the AUD USD here. And like a lot of our commodity currencies, we have seen the Aussie rally into today's event. Now it doesn't quite have the strength that the CAD has, but uh, we do see prices testing range resistance as we speak. Range resistance, again, this value between R3 and S3, and currently testing that near 75.12. If prices remain range bound, we would reasonably see prices test resistance and move back down towards this value of support. Now this would mean that we have a dollar strong piece of momentum at some point during the day. Now whether prices stop at support or not are still yet to be seen. Again, a lot of it has to do with how strong the dollar is. If it just pauses at the support, this may be another opportunity for range traders in the event that the dollar firms up. Remember, S4 breakouts are going to occur underneath our pivot at 74.73. And this event, what we'll notice is prices can project to the downside. One time extension of today's range is going to be at S3. And what I can look for is a one to two preliminary risk reward ratio taking me down to just about 74.45. On the flip side, in a dollar bearish scenario in which our commodity currencies continue to rally, traders may look for breakouts over R4. Today, that's going to be right uh, at 75.26. Again, a 1 to 2 risk reward ratio brings our projection to 75.53 on the Aussie dollar. So great chart, lots of interesting activity in our commodity currencies going into today's rate decision. Let's take a comment. This one coming in from Pierre saying, uh, as pivots will change at 5 p.m., is there enough time for breakouts to reach the target um, after FOMC? Well, again, as far as targets are concerned, we don't know if prices will reach them or not. We don't know if prices will reach them before a certain time or not. Now, of course, when we look at day trading opportunities, sure, expectations are for them to close before the end of the trading day. Now, will that always happen? No, it won't. Do we want it to happen? Sure. Should we have a plan of action for both contingencies? Absolutely. Now, me personally, when I set stops and limits, I set risk-reward ratios, I want one of two things to happen. Either have it price hit a stop or a limit. So for me, once I set those values out there, I'm going to let prices hit either of those values. Now, sometimes it may have to hang out there a little bit through the end of our trading day. Me, personally, I'm okay with that. Other traders, on the other hand, they want to be completely flat, 
and they're flat at the end of the day. So win, lose, or draw, they're cutting off their positions and they're moving forward. Now, if you cut off your positions at the end of the day, might you miss out on some profit? Absolutely. Might you miss out on some loss? Absolutely. So again, pros and cons on either side of the coin. The key is to pick one and stick with it. It's kind of like trading ahead of the news. Do you want to wait for the confirmation? Do you want to go ahead and get in ahead or trade the event itself? There's no right or wrong answer. There's just risks and rewards on either side of the coin. It's uh, just going ahead and uh, making those opinions ahead of time and holding yourself accountable for you. Okay, this one coming in from Edgar saying, Dollar Cad headed back up to the R3 pivot. Uh, yes, absolutely. We have seen a little bit of a shift on these pairs. It's not really too surprising, though, and uh, we're back inside of the range ahead of the event. Because at the end of the day, there's only a few people on the planet that know the outcome of today's event, and they all work for the Fed. Now, with that being said, again, traders, we're going to speculate. That's what we do. That's our business, speculating one direction or the other. Some traders are biased long, some traders are going to be biased short. So as we see that push and pull, yeah, it's no real surprise that we're back inside of the range until we have that news event come through. So ultimately, again, no big surprises yet. We'll have to wait just like everybody else. We'll keep an eye on the countdown here. I know it seems like a long time away, two hours and ten minutes, but Believe me, we'll get there and we'll have an outcome before uh, the close of the day. So keep your eyes peeled, maintain your biases, and keep focus on those key price levels for today's news. Okay, just a few minutes remaining, 10 short minutes. I do have time to get out a few pieces of information. First things first. It is going to be my webinar survey. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I want to know what you thought about today's Day Trading Markets webinar ahead of our FOMC event. Yes, I want to know the good. I want to know the bad. I want to know the ugly. I want to know everything in between because your feedback matters and it allows me to continue bringing you the best presentations in markets. Now, if you forgot my name, make sure you select Walker England from the drop down. Very important because I do want to read your feedback. And lastly, work your way to number seven. This is where you can note any topics or events that you would like discussed in these webinars. Now I know we have a lot of technical trading questions and I'm trying to work through them in our Tuesday and Thursday presentations where we talk about trading tips, tools, and tactics. So, if you have tools or tactics you'd like to discuss, get them in. That way we can work them into our day trading markets webinars. But I won't know what those are until uh, you go ahead and print those out. So please uh, fill this out. Click done. It'll beam this off to yours truly. I will um, give it a consideration and, of course, adjust our curriculum is needed. And Edgar, I hear your call for Fibonacci. It is coming up, and I hope to deliver on that. Um, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow. It depends on market conditions, but uh, certainly shortly in the future. I do want to have a presentation for that. Okay, with that being said, uh, let me go ahead and get out a quick link for you. First things first, this is going to be for my euro dollar analysis. I didn't mention it in today's program. I do see a few of you asking for that. So who am I to deny you uh, such a request? Here we go. This is going to be yours truly. It is the euro dollar FOMC technical forecast. Goes into our trading range and as well how to read the pivots going into the FOMC. So here it is. Let me cut and paste the link. This is going to be the Euro USD FOMC forecast written by yours truly. Next up, I've got a slew of links for you. I told you, hang in there. This is going to be our YouTube channel. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I do have today's presentation recorded. And I want you to enjoy today's presentation again. If you are and so inclined, you can go to 
youtube.com backslash user uh, backslash daily FX news. And what I'll do is post the presentations up. So, of course, you can pause it, play it, resume it, enjoy it at your leisure. And here's yesterday's day trading markets uh, webinar. If you like the content, make sure you give it a thumbs up and enjoy. So, here will be the YouTube um, channel. So, let me type that in. Final link of the day is going to be to our webinar calendar. Now, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are quickly coming to a close for today's event. But uh, what we're going to have is some upcoming presentations, and they are going to be all event driven. So what we'll see here is going to be the event trading with David Song. Now, David Song is going to focus on FOMC itself. So, Russ Johnson, if you are looking at outcomes, like what happens if no hike comes? For the contrarians out there, wow, that would be quite the dollar bear scenario, wouldn't it? Well, I'm out of time, but make sure you check in with David Song here. He will cover the event in full. That's going to be in 36 short minutes. Now, Mr. James Stanley, he's going to be covering the event live. So you can prepare for the event with David Song, see the actual coverage. This is going to be with Mr. James Stanley in one hour and 50 minutes. So, yes, lots of different outcomes, lots of different expectations. Enjoy the content with us here on Daily Effects as we guide you through the FOMC event later today. Guys, that's going to be it for me. Looking down at the clock, it is my turn to pass the microphone. But let me say this. Regardless of if you trade the news or not, if you sit on the sidelines or not, make sure you have a plan of action. And Sometimes that plan of action does mean sitting on the sidelines. Let me be the first. There's nothing wrong with maintaining a neither opinion until we get some degree of technical confirmation whether it's through moving averages, pivot points, or the like. And then, once you have a gauge on the market, then you can proceed to trade your strategy. And, of course, uh, you can practice on a demo, watch the event live, and enjoy the upcoming videos from Daily Effects. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for me. I will catch you all tomorrow, again, bright and early, for our webinar on trading tips, tools, and tactics. I can't wait. And I look forward to seeing you all there. Have a good one.